What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, in a news that shocks nobody, tech industry wants to lock up nuclear power for AI. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Next up, will evil Google's AI demands exact a high price from New Yorkers who could be foolish uh, went for solar and wind? Could be very interesting opinion piece that we're going to bring you. We love a good AI story. Next up, CNUC launches China's largest LNG storage base. China added again at the wow. time they will stay over in China as Chinese coal terminals, quote, bursting at the seams. Stu will then toss over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today. Huge 2% rise, mainly off a, a, a lot of shift in sentiment on the fundamental side. So I'll cover that. And then finally, court hearing on Sitgo. Auction could be delayed until September amid low bids. But they'll tell you it's a competitive process. So I will cover right. all that. And ships, guys, <laughs> as always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies over there in the tech industry want to lock up nuclear power for AI. Michael, this one has got Amazon and then the next one is Google. So you can't beat an Amazon Google tag team on our stories no. here. The owners of roughly a third of the U.S. nuclear power plants are in talk with tech companies to provide electricity for new data centers needed to meet the demands of artificial intelligence. Boom. Amazon, this is amazing. Constellation Energy, a 2.91 increase upcoming triangle. Amazon, uh, it's unbelievable. In a subsidiary purchased a nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania, we covered for 650 million bucks. And when you sit back and take a look at it, the AI demand is looking at between these two articles. I'll go into the other one here in a sec pushing out renewables and they're going to be putting in contracts for nuclear power and then buying only the renewable when they need the credits. That's going to destroy the grid for the consumer. <laughs> oh yeah. The grid for that's the first thing I thought it was like, we're in trouble then. It, it is. And so you're going to, this is the new interest in nuclear is just unbelievable. In this Maryland nuclear power plant, it's pretty amazing. Share, let's see here. The customer has to come to us with many of the industry says, I'll need as much as power as you can make available, said Vista's <laughs> Energy Chief. Huh. AI is going to take over the grid. You're seeing this. I mean, Amazon wants as much capacity. Just wait till they start buying old rundown new. When does a tech company buy Diablo Canyon? Oh, if it's going to be decommissioned, why would you not buy it as a tech company? Are you allowed to? Well, you, that's a whole nother animal because if it becomes decommissioned, I think we're going to see the decommissioned start being recommissioned. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it would actually happen. Just an interesting, just an interesting thing. But yes, the, all big tech, they're, they're coming for the power and they're going to get it at all costs. So what's funny oh. is now we'll actually see, you know, if, if Amazon needs upgrades to the grid, well, guess what? Amazon's probably going to get upgrades to the grid. So it could, right. it could be a great thing overall. But they're only going to get them in the microgrids that they can afford for Good their point. thing. And, and so let me throw this at you here. Hunt, the uh, Federal Regulatory Commission, also Amazon's deal in Pennsylvania, as much as $140 million in additional cost for the grid could go to the consumers. The consumers are getting that. Wow. All right. What's next here? Let's go to Google. Let's go to Google. Will evil Google's AI demands extract a high price from New Yorkers? who foolishly went for solar and wind. See, this one is really bringing it out. And when we go through, assuming this is more or less true, what are the implications? The PJM grid is in better position to deal with the rising energy needs. However, pull electricity from the PJM grid that includes the Lime Rock plant and go through this. So what it is, what they're basically saying is, we will only take the wind and solar when it's at its cheapest and only if we have enough credits. Wow. This is unbelievable. If we need the credits, that's in there. Well, so I'm going to want the credits. For... Of course, they're going to want the credits. But at what price? It's a good point. It, it really is a good point. Um, and anybody knows the answer. 
No, and New York is just dumb enough to go, okay. They're, right. they're, they're, they're just as brilliant as our friends over on the West Coast. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, let's go to China here. Now, there's a couple things about this one. This is an amazing story on LNG. CNOOC China launches China's largest LNG storage base. This is some amazing numbers. These are the world's largest onshore LNG storage tanks. 2.5 million cubic meters can satisfy gas co consumption of 10 million households for eight months. Holy wow. smokes, Batman. That's a lot of houses. It is. Wow, and China's doing everything. We'll see in the next story when we've known they've gone into coal heavily. They're now stocking up on LNG. They just want to be energy independent or have multiple streams of energy coming in their way so they're not as dependent on one stream when they eventually decide to bomb Taiwan. I mean, it's obvious. You, it doesn't take a you're... genius to figure out what's going on here. You're bringing up one of my stealer lines here, and that is when company, when countries stockpile energy, they go to war. Germany lost World War II because of the lack of petrol. Interesting. Interesting. The, the Battle of the Bulge was lost because no diesel. Germans no. walked around with siphon hoses, and that's not going to happen to any of these guys. No. So, let's go to coal. I'll tell you what, Chinese coal terminals bursting at the seams. This port storage is bursting at the seams, and it appears unlikely that seaborne air rivals will be absorbed unless end users begin direct directing coal inland. Part of this is because they had more rain than they expected, so their mm -hmm. hydro was able to pick in, but they're still stockpiling oil natural gas, LNG, everything yep. that they can. And they've now got several new pipelines that they are working out with the Russians. China's top three sources for coal this year, Indonesia, Australia, and the Russia Federation, where they are importing from. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, they're, they're, they're they love their energy. They'll get it in any form that they want. Yes. Now, here's the funny part, Michael. China is pushing electric cars on its population at a tremendous rate, he said, noting how taxes had been skewed to favor cars that do not rely on imported oil. I'll be this turns pushes demand for coal fire powered electric usage. Hey, it'll be interesting to see. They're going to be start, you know, and this is going to come up with another issue. If Trump does win in November, there's going to be a big tariff on China. It'll be interesting to see if that EV market bleeds into ours. I and mean, people are expecting the price of electric vehicles to go down tremendously as China begins to import. But Biden slapped the tariff on it. And if if Trump wins, you're going to see a whole other round of tariffs on it. I want to give a shout out to Vance again. He was a Trump economist and I interviewed him. That should be coming out tomorrow or the next day. One of the key things that he said is he did, don't look for all these Trump tariffs to kick in nearly as easy. They're not as easy as he is saying. And he helped do the first ones. So I don't think we're going to be tariffing anytime soon. No, I don't. I don't think so either. All right. We'll go ahead and pop over and cover this crazy oil price rise today. But before we do that, guys, we got to pay the bills. Thanks for checking us out on the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. You can hit the description below for all of the links and timestamps to all of the articles that we are covering here. If you want to move forward or move back, we appreciate it. And also all the links to the articles via the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com. You can also check us out, the energynewsbeat.substack.com, where we record these in the afternoons, release them in the, that following morning. So, guys, if you want to get early access to the stories that you hear in this podcast, go check us out on Substack. Um, you can find that in the description below and subscribe to tomorrow's news today. But in the spirit of oil prices, Stu, we were up 2% today, mainly off the back of a fundamental shift of how people are, are feeling sentiment-wise. Before we dive into that, though, S&P 500 having a, a little bit of a day so far. It was up big early in the session, traded down, but still finds itself six-tenths of a or tenth of a percentage point up. NASDAQ up about five-tenths of a percentage point or about half a percentage point. Two-year um, yields, 0.3 percentage points. Ten-year yields, actually 1.8 percentage points on the upside. Dollar index, relatively flat. Bitcoin up 1.2 percentage points. Crude oil up 
2.27 percentage points, currently trading 83.40 as we record this in the afternoon on the first. Absolutely unbelievable, Stu. And nothing's really happened other than a shift in sentiment. So we have seen natural gas drop price a little bit, $2.40. But going back to oil prices, you know, I mean, I mean, mainly people are are just now figuring out that we may or may not be in a supply crunch depending on what happens with oil cuts versus increased you know hotter weather or, or sustained hotter weather which is kind of funny natural gas prices fell usually that's a proxy for prices but now we're looking at you know more longer stretch hot not necessarily where natural gas trades in a more of a short term short term swing per se so very interesting there. We also will today, later in the afternoon, you guys will hear U.S. Fed Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, who will then basically he'll give a statement based upon the central bank's latest policy meeting, which will occur Wednesday. And we will also hear U.S. non-farm payrolls on Friday. Kind of interesting. Some July 3rd work. They're working hard over the Federal Reserve, trying to keep rates high. Pretty unbelievable there. little quote from J.P. Morgan. They, their analyst dropped it this morning. Demand indicators look solid, especially in the all-important U.S. market and peak refinery demand for crude is now firmly in place and should last through August. So J.P. turns a little bit bullish on that. So we'd love to see it. The only other thing, Stu, that I saw is Petavesa. So Venezuela, obviously they own Citgo Petroleum. They go ahead and are in bankruptcy. And the court, title of the article, court hearing on Citgo auction could be delayed until September. So they went bankrupt last year, mainly for the fact that they're, along with Venezuela, about 20 to $24 billion of liabilities. There's a couple companies that are on that creditor list. I was trying to pull it up here. I think it's uh, one of them's ConocoPhillips. We know that. There's also a grain company in Canada and another pension fund here in the United States that that kind of round out the top three debt holders here. So they're running a, not a blind auction, but kind of a blind auction. And it's been delayed, if only because the bids haven't been great. Now, what's funny is the quote out of the, you know, the quote, the court appointed special master to oversee the case seeks more time to evaluate competitive offers among which multiple bids were actionable. The court wrote in a motion, yet, Here's the interesting part. It was valued somewhere between 11 and $13 billion. And yet right. Reuters reported that after the first round, the highest bid was only $7.3 billion. And there's $24 billion of outstanding creditors. It's unbelievable. So you're going to get, what, 30, 40 cents on the dollar? And that's really all they're trying to do right here. But that's unbelievable. Wow. You know, if second round bids do not come close, this is also in the report from Reuters. Um, if it doesn't come close to $10 billion, Venezuela could seek a third round of bidding. Which, okay, so no one buys it for seven. Hopefully someone buys it for 10. I don't know. It usually is not how auctions work, right? Right. Yeah. You don't want to walk by and just go, hey, how you doing? Sold. You do not want well, to raise and your be, hand. The interesting part is do these debt holders still <laughs> then keep, you know, how does the post-closure, what does the cap table look like is the real question. If you're paying 30 cents on the dollar for them to liquidate and go away, that's different than if you're just assuming now whatever's the leftover debt value. Right. Super and interesting. liabilities. Short, it's not kind of a short week. We'll be with you every day. We'll record a show. We'll have one out Wednesday, and then we'll have one out Thursday as well. But have a happy July 4th. What should people be worried about this week? Oh, just buckle up. And uh, we are in the political season around the world right now. It's already starting in Europe. Look for it rolling around uh, the protests approaching your local neighborhood soon yeah absolutely so all right guys we'll we'll let you get out of here with that we appreciate you guys checking us out world greatest podcast energynewsbeat.com Stuart Turley and michael tanner we'll see you tomorrow folks